All right. Now we are going to start to talk about Apex Integration Services. So on this introduction trail, we can see that we can make callouts to external services from Apex. So from within Apex, we can make callout to external services. So we can do that two ways. First example, we can use SOAP web services. The second method, we can use HTTP callouts, typically using REST or JSON. So I'm going to give you two practical examples. For example, you have a shopping cart. And for example, you are using WooCommerce. This is a WordPress shopping cart plugin and you are selling shoes. So this is all happening on the website, right? For example, mycoolshoes.com. So people go to your website and purchase shoes, and then you can use SOAP to push that order into Salesforce. So somebody buys shoes, pay for the shoe, and it goes to your sales force and as, as an opportunity. And that can be um, done using the SOAP integration, SOAP API, right? And then it goes to your sales force where your organization staff process the order. And that, sh that um, warehouse is shipping the shoe out to the customer now the order has been shipped. Now, once the order has been shipped, you want to push that information back to the shopping cart, changing the status of the order to shipped, and then notify the customer, oh, your shoe has been shipped. Expect to receive it in three business days. So all of that going back and forth is using SOAP integration for enterprise integra integration in the background, right? Because it's all happening in the back end. There is no UI happening. Nothing is being clicked. Nothing, no form is being filled to execute the integration. It just happens in the background. So for those kind of integration, you can use the SOAP API, which is intended for enterprise integration more uh, stateful operations and um, they are they are not going anytime away anytime soon. You will really use SOAP mostly when integrating with legacy application or for transactions that require a formal exchange format or stateful operations. So that's an example of using or when to use the SOAP API. Now, what about the REST or JSON? You can pretty much do that when um, doing everything else but the one that I just explained. For example, if you want to display a foreign exchange rate on your Salesforce here, for example, what is the conversion rate real time from US dollar to Canadian dollar, from US dollar to the Indian rupee and so on, you can use an API that's available here if you click on example, you can pick um, foreign exchange rates, right? And you can also choose to display stock prices, real-time stock prices. What's the price of the sales for stock? Google stock, Apple stock, Tesla stock, whatever. Even cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and so on. So this... Um, integration, you can use the REST API or JSON, okay? So you pull the data from this service and display it on your Salesforce user interface, wherever you want to develop it. You know, you can develop Visual Force pages or Lightning components to play around with this kind of data. So that you would use the 
HTTP callouts, which typically use REST or JSON, all right? So stuff that is um, touching the user interface, you must, you must probably is using HTTP callouts, but the ones that's doing in the back end integration, you will probably use the SOAP API integration. It's more solid, all right? Okay, so to develop that, first of all, you have to authorize your endpoint addresses. So on this particular trail where we are going to use um, Apex REST callouts, SOAP callouts, and web services, we will be using these two Heroku platform. So we want to authorize these two um, URL so we can actually access that without any hiccup. So to do that, go to your remote site settings from your playground. So I'm gonna close this example and I'm going to close that as well. Now I'm gonna go to my setup. This is my playground setup. And then you head to remote site settings here. And add those two websites or URL. I'm gonna go new remote site and what do we wanna name that? Um, animals HTTP, let's copy this name. So that's the name and the remote site URL would be this guy here. Too much, so I'm gonna just drag this part until there, copy that, put it there. Right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna save a new. I think we have to do two, right? Save and new. The second one is this one. So, Trailhead Animal Service HTTP would be the name, and the remote site URL would be this one. Well, we can enter the description as well. But the first one, we don't have a description, right? Oh, we do. Wait, wait, wait. I think I'm missing something here. This is the second one, Anima Soap. So you have to pay attention when doing this. Don't rush it, okay? And then you copy here. This is the URL. And that last part is actually the description only. And we can put this description here and add it here and just save and I'm going to edit the other one which is the animal HTTP I'm going to add the description we have over here which I missed and save so there we have it. We have just authorized these two sites. So now the quiz, which of the following statements is true about external callouts? SOAP callouts use XML and may use WSDL for code generation. That's correct. HTTP callout typically use JSON, but can use XML as well, correct. HTTP callouts are generally easier to work with, with than SOAP callouts. That's correct. I've worked with both SOAP and HTTP callouts. It's just more, more mm, rugged, more, you know, it's more, more stuff to be, to be coded with the SOAP. SOAP web services are commonly used for, well, that the backend integration, right? Enterprise apps that require formal exchange format or stateful operations. Okay, well, that was quick. I will see you on the next video, which is Apex REST callout. Let's get the 100 points. Boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video 
and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.